from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering VTUG's New England Winter Warmer 2017. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, and welcome to Gillette Stadium. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube. We're the worldwide leader in live enterprise tech coverage. Uh, really happy to be here. This is the 11th year of the VTUG Winter Warmer, and joining me for my intro segment here is Chris Harney. Uh, Chris, you're the founder of the VTUG. Uh, you, you, you bring together all these users, you know, really good ecosystem going between what's happening in virtualization, uh, beyond just the VMware stuff, and really pulled in some of the cloud uh, activities in the keynotes this morning. I mean, we were talking containers, and GitHub, and security, and you know, virtualization, of course, and just a wide spectrum of stuff. So uh, thanks so much for having us again, and uh, you know, to, to give, give us the update on Vita. Oh, thanks, too. Uh, it's a pleasure, I'm glad you're here. Um, VTUG is still growing. I mean, we're, we're going to Tampa, uh, upstate New York. Uh, we've done events in Chicago, Silicon and Valley. Um, and I, I think there's a big theme that people want, much like Silicon Angle, they want an independent view of the, of the state of IT. You know, in virtualization, you know, it's been going around, it's been, you know, forever. But since 2002, VMware was the virtualization platform, and it still is. But now there are more choices, whether you're talking cloud, hybrid cloud, hyper-converged, and, and people need to hear what's out there to make educated decisions on what to move forward with. Yeah, great point, Chris. I mean, right, when we talk to users, um, there's still some out there that are trying to figure out what that whole virtualization thing is and how to deploy it. It's not like we've reached you know, full saturation right. on the market, but when you're talking about strategy, it's you know what we hear people talking about is, you know, there's that term thrown around about digital transformation, but uh, you know, you had a user uh, this morning talking about you know gaming and mobile and how that's fitting in the cloud. Um, you talk about how you know machine data and sensors are, are fitting in. You know, there's all these new technologies that are changing very fast. What do you hear from the user community? What are the things that are you know top of mind for them? What are they struggling with? What are they uh, you know coming to events like this to try yeah. to understand? You know, I, I think VDI is finally taking a hold. It's finally a year of VDI. You know, we've been going to this since 2006, I think. Um, security, people are struggling with security and automation. I think those are two topics that, that companies need to do better on. You know, we're trying to figure out how to automate, how to get VRealize working, and it's not as easy. You know, you, uh, all these products that have been stitched together, and no one has made a cohesive package to just install and run. So, uh, um, they're just struggling with getting good information on how to really deploy or what works or not. Yeah, so Chris, I remember uh, the, the, the first couple of years that we brought theCUBE here, uh, we talked about really just educating on that basic cloud stuff. You've had Microsoft every year, you've got either Amazon or somebody in the Amazon ecosystem uh, giving presentations. Where are we with some of these discussions? I mean, you know, DevOps, you know, containers, uh, when, when are we getting a serverless track here? Uh, you know, uh, how many people are still kind of, you know, bread and butter, virtualization is a major piece of what I do, and you know, where are we in them understanding some of the other pieces? You know, from my experience in talking to the users, you're still about 90% on-prem data center. You know, cloud is still a big word, it means different things to different people. Software as a service is a successful deployment, I think, of cloud. Uh, opportunities, but uh, um, people, uh, what I think is happening, they'll try the cloud, they don't go all in, and, and then they realize it's too expensive that way and they bring it back in-house. And, and I believe if you're going to do it, you have to go all in with the cloud, you have to uh, take that leap of faith and make it work, and many people are struggling to do that. Great, so the event itself, you, you mentioned uh, VTUG's been expanding, it's, uh, you know, you, you and I have been looking at, you know, VMUG and how that's happened. There's been um, kind of some politics, I guess, if you will, lately. There's, you know, VMUG people have been fired, some people running the organization, like, that they outsource some stuff to. They're, they're switching people. Uh, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to interview the you know, CEO of VMUG a couple of times. Um, I, I think in general we said, you know, VMUG is a good thing, but people are looking for more. And what, what, what feedback do you get? Um, you know, what, what are you hearing from users? And maybe talk a little bit more about some of those other organizations that you're working with. Yeah, no, I, I totally hear it. I mean, VMUG, you know, we started out doing VMUG. Um, and it's a great thing, and it's, it's education, and it's free to the community. Um, and I think there's, like you said, politics going on. You know, VMware is not happy with Nutanix, so they don't want any Nutanix people in on running their VMUGs. Um, uh, they don't want to have Microsoft speaking at there, but it's relevant. I mean, VMware runs Microsoft workloads. Come on, why not have them there and talk about what they're doing? And 
I think that's it. It's a, it's a closed system. It is a VMware user group. They want to talk about VMware. Well, the tide is changing, folks. I mean, you are, you see Docker out there, OpenStack, Red Hat, um, and they're everywhere. You know, they're not just in the little uh, small shops that can't afford the product. I mean, you're talking, well, we heard this morning, a Fortune 5 bank, one of the top five banks runs everything on OpenStack. And, and they, want, they need a place to go and talk to other users about how they're doing it. And I think that's the whole premise of VTUG is that, you know, let's, let's get smarter together. Great. Chris, what's exciting you out in the marketplace? What technologies are you interested in getting involved in uh, that, 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 that you get to play with? Uh, everyone's here in hyperconverged. You know, I think we heard a good talk this morning that you know people don't want to have to manage storage and servers independently. That you can put storage on compute nodes, but you can't put compute on a storage node. Um, so it, I don't know if that's true or not. You have some intelligence side of storage. Um, so all flash is exciting. I mean, I look at these data centers of have rows and rows of spinning disks, and they com they consolidate down to a rack of all flash drives. Um, so and it's and it's good for the it's it's cost less to run an all flash array. So um, security, uh, network virtualization is exciting, um, and I think there needs to be more education around that and what it does. Um, people are still confused with the word micro segmentation. They don't know what that means. So so I, I think the industry has to do a better job of explaining what they do. And I think, you know, listening to John this morning, um, you know, when you take your tech specialists and make them marketing people, I think that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, uh, so hyperconverged, of course, there was the big news this week. Uh, HPE is buying uh, SimpliVity for $650 million worth of cash. Uh, I did a vi video yesterday talking about it. Uh, and actually, I, I put out there, I said, well, you know, in some ways, we're now past hyperconverged. I mean, you know, it, it, it's not that it's HPE buying them, but at the valuation that they got bought, which is about 2x what they had raised, and probably in the three to four x of what revenue is, um, it's congratulations to SimpliVity, but it's not super exciting from, you know, the, the, the Valley VC uh, type of folks, you know, investment of infrastructure, kind of interesting. It's the, some of those broader discussions, as you said, you know, security, absolutely huge, hot there, how cloud infrastructure fits into that. And I think hyperconvergence is a piece of that overall puzzle as it becomes a platform, but I'd love to get your take on SimpliVity uh, specifically and, you know, th does hyperconverge comes up for customers or is that, that just one of the solutions to, to help them simplify their environments? So I think it's great for SimpliVity. You know, like you said, there wasn't exciting. You didn't see that 10x multiplier we were seeing years ago. Um, but you have a company like HP that can really put some investment into the product. Um, and I think that's good for the people that have bought it and the people who are going to buy it. Um, uh, you and I have talked many times about the difference between some of the hyper-converged players. And they're truly, I think there is use cases for each of them. And, and uh, I think that gap is narrowing though. I think they're, they're now starting to, um, create products that are overlapping each other. Uh, so so it's, it's good for the industry, I think. It's, it's, we're going to see it. It's, it's much like uh, your wireless was a while ago. Remember we had 15 wireless companies that all got bought up and everyone had to have their own, their own pet wireless that they sold. And I think that's, that's what's happening with the converged space. Um, all right, so Chris, <laughs> uh, uh, just want to give you the last word. Uh, you know, why, why are users coming out to an event like this? Uh, if, you, if you've got any metrics as to kind of, you know, rough order magnitude, how many people are here, and uh, uh, what, what do you hear from the users as to what they're really excited about uh, to learn in today's event? So unfortunately, it's been a busy morning and I haven't even looked at registration yet. <laughs> uh, but the users are, are excited to hear what's going on in the cloud. You know, they haven't really dabbled in it much. Um, so we'll still keep bringing cloud providers back. Um, and, and what I'm hearing is that it's interesting, they say their, their companies aren't affording uh, training, but there's so much training out there on the web that, that that's free. So um, I think people come here to network, find out what's real and what's not, um, and, and not, so it's not my architecture. They want to find out from other users what's working for them, um, and then they're adopting those practices. All right. So. Chris, thanks as always for helping me kick this off. Uh, I know both of us were here last weekend and we'll be <laughs> back here again Sunday uh, for the New England Patriots facing uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers in the AFC Championship. But we've got a full day of technology here, including special guests from the Patriot alumni at the end of the day. So uh, stay with us, uh, we'll, we'll have the full broadcast all day and uh, thanks for watching theCUBE. Thanks. Since the dawn of the cloud, the cube has been there.
Connecting with executives, practitioners, entrepreneurs, thought leaders. But you're not a thought leader anymore. You're a futurist. That's the new trend. Futurist.